Uh, my name is Mike Major, I work for Skanska and I am the design director, chiefly working in the healthcare sector. The architect's central role it is one of facilitator, one of arbitrator, very much seen as a profession as being impartial to the whole process and I think also that they have a good view of the whole process so they understand it from inception, concept, all the way through to operation. So they have that unique perspective and if they're organised and they're strong enough, they can present that and carry that message all the way through. I think architects are in a unique position in terms of where they sit within the profession and where they sit within overall NHS estates procurement. I think that they are able at a very early stage to present options to their NHS estates to leverage um, the assets available to them and I think that the architect should seize that opportunity because otherwise somebody else will fill the void. It's as simple as that. I'm Mike Pringle. I am the president of the Royal College of General Practitioners. What we're seeing is a, a historic movement of services from the secondary care sector into the primary care sector, from hospitals into general practice. And if you can place any bets on the future, it is that we'll see a much wider range of services in general practice, um, a much wider range of skills and clinician-based skills in general practice, and a much higher demand for integrated services, for instance, private provision. That we are going to see um, larger groupings of primary care service providers. So while we still will need small primary care general, general practice uh, surgeries, um, what we will find is they will be operating as, as a local uh, cooperative, um, we call them federations, and, um, but there are many other terms for that, but you will find that in a geographical area that practice will be working much more closely together to share services like HR, like finance, like IT, but also to share clinical skills. I want you to be brave and to think about what sort of uh, built environment will support the various models of care that will spring up in the next 10, 15, 20, 50 years. And I think we need much more flexibility. We need to start to question all the regs around um, buildings uh, for healthcare. We need to start to be much more imaginative about the sorts of environments that people will work in 10 years' time. Uh, my name is Phil Nedin and uh, I work as a healthcare facilities consultant for Arup. I think the biggest challenge we've got at the moment is the, uh, the future of the health estate. What, what I'm getting at is we've got to have clinically led development control plans, long term development control plans, so that if we have certain buildings on the estate that are currently multi-bed wards, we know that there's a drive uh, towards single bedroom accommodation. So the question is, is that building able to be transformed into single bed accommodation or should it be transformed into something entirely differently? So you, the, the, the estate becomes a massive jigsaw, clinically driven, but nevertheless a, 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 real, a real jigsaw for architects to plan properly in a long term, in a long -term planning uh, way. Dr Barry Trindle, um, I've been with the, working within the NHS for around 20 years on capital projects, uh, construction, uh, but I'm currently with the London Borough of Brent as an interim programme manager providing 500 new independent living units for extra care, dementia and mental health clients. The architect adds value in, in several areas. I think one is space optimisation. Two is presence, and by that I mean municipal presence or the quality of the building, the entrance, I think is particularly valid, the facade, how the clients actually feel when they enter or approach a building. Um, having spent most of my time in the NHS, having built NHS units, actually being able to um, make the client feel at ease when they approach a mental health unit and relaxed is very important. 
My name is John Hicks. I work for ACOM, which is a global service provider. I look after the healthcare and science business across the world. Architects and architecture, um, perhaps within the RIBA, may be seen as one thing, but in my experience within healthcare, they can actually be completely divided. You can get a great architect who's fantastic at communicating, extracting a brief, which I think is the, the hidden gem within the architectural profession that's probably been suppressed in our period over the last decade through PFI and other things. And I see that separate from architecture. And if you look at the NHS in this country going forward, where there's a greater need to capitalise on the physical estate that we've got, perhaps, and less so in building new, the need to be a good architect and brief and may therefore not have to deliver architecture, I think is an important distinction. My name's Christopher Shaw. I'm founding director of Medical Architecture and chair of Architects for Health. So the NHS has a vast estate. It's, it's, it's uh, been accumulated over the years. It's got a wide range of, of uh, different tenures that, that uh, hospital trusts and, and hospital boards have to deal with. That estate is likely to have to shrink down. The level of utilisation is, 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 as I said, poor but we're going to see a lot of consolidation. That leads to big development opportunities for integrating hospitals more closely in housing developments, retail developments, and, and so on around that land, using that land creatively. The future NHS estate is going to see uh, consolidation of hospitals. I think we're going to see fewer, larger acute hospitals, but at the same time, a, a, a grouping of care facilities closer to home, offering a wide range of services for the, um, for the elderly population, for, the, for those that are chronically ill, and for people with mental illness. My name is Andrew Simpson. Um, I've been an NHS client uh, for many years, uh, and now I'm a planning consultant working for Dominic Lawson Bespoke Planning, uh, and I also uh, do some community development work working for a firm called Goldfinch. The way that architects can add more value is to uh, be more confident in the importance of design uh, and in the importance of their profession within uh, the provision of uh, healthcare. Now that uh, sounds as though I'm saying that architects have been shrinking violence over the last few years and I think to a degree though uh, that has been the case because of the mechanisms of um, procuring new healthcare buildings. So it tends to be contractor-led, um, it tends to be uh, driven by um, questions around cost and around meeting uh, very rigorous standards, all of which are important, uh, I'm not denying that for one moment, but design tends to be secondary uh, then uh, in, in the process, whereas uh, my view is, is that architects need to confidently assert themselves in those, in those mechanisms. If you're a young designer, don't try and take it all on. It's a big, complicated system, and those barriers to entry are there for some reason. But you can take small bites. You could work on an emergency department. You can work on a, on a ward refurbishment. You can certainly look at uh, GP practices, which are very open traditionally for, uh, for, to architects, and are much easier from an architect's perspective to work with because you generally have identifiable partners in charge who are able to advise you about what they like and what they don't like. But certainly there are opportunities in, in health, health clinics, in small psychiatric hospitals and in, uh, and in large hospitals to look at parts of those and to develop a specialism within that and to use that as stepping stones to, to, to really sort of develop uh, uh, your practices and your, your work within health. I think clinicians have learned in the same way that architects have, have learned that the information technology, the way that IT is now impacting on practice both in healthcare and in architecture is having a fundamental impact on how they are dealing with things. So I think what I'm finding certainly with 
the clinicians who are using IT creatively within their everyday work. They're finding working with architects who equally are thinking about how they're using IT is actually bringing those debates closer together. And if you look at the way that architects are educated and clinicians are educated, doctors are educated, we spend seven years or five years together at university. So there's lots of synergies there that actually come out. And I think what I would like to see happen is more of the younger architects within the profession beginning to get excited by the potential of creating really good healthcare buildings. Uh, there's uh, anything that's of key importance in a healthcare building is to create an environment that both the staff and the patients feel comfortable in. And it is about daylight, it is about nature, it is about finding your way around, it is about the finishes and the comfort of the facility and also the balancing of the sort of comfort and the soft things with the technology and sometimes the technology you want to in a way a sci-fi movie sort of glamorizes technology uh, you can glamorize the technology of bits of the building uh, but other parts should be soft and it's only an architect that can sort of bring that uh, sensibility to the design of the environments and too often uh, and we see it, there are architects that specialize in healthcare and they forget that mission. They forget the mission of creating delightful environments. There ought to be a better way of us sharing with each other the sorts of things that are going on um, and getting people, clients, groups of clients, people, as I've done uh, in the past, put them in a minibus and take them around the country to show them other examples, to talk to staff, to see what worked well, to see what didn't work well, to learn from those experiences and formally, perhaps, to start uh, looking much more, uh, in a much more focused way on doing post-occupancy evaluations, which we don't do at all at the moment, or very, very rarely. Most of the NHS estate is composed of old buildings, 95%, whereas only 4% has been affected by the new program of building hospitals. We have not tackled the 95%. What, what I'm asking here is more or less for the architect to take leadership in terms of refurbishment, reconfiguring, and getting involved. Not, not, it may not be glamorous like the new build, but it is what is needed to address the real problem of the NHS estate.